Hi, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine Restoration. And today we're going to look at the tension assembly on a Singer Featherweight. Uh, this is a common style that Singer used for um, several decades. Yeah, a lot of different models. Your uh, 201s, your 15-125s, your uh, 1591s. Singer 9966. Uh, so you'll see a lot of these around. Uh, if you have not yet taken apart your tension assembly, before you start, uh, take some good clear pictures uh, from the sides uh, and try to get uh, try to get a good picture of how the different parts go together before uh, before you get yourself into it. And as you take your pieces off, lay them out in sequence, and then take a picture of that once you have them all laid out. Uh, it'll really help you stay oriented as to the, um, the sequence that they go on and which way the parts face. So without further ado, uh, start with the, uh, the knurled nut on the outside. And it has a pin on the back of it that uh, it's uh, for adjustment. Uh, this numbered dial has uh, a series of holes all the way around and uh, the uh, pin on the back of this neural nut fits into uh, the hole once you find your adjustment point and that locks it in. Uh, and the number dial is spring loaded uh, by the uh, compression spring of the tension assembly. So the first thing you want to do is press in slightly on the number dial so that the pin is clear of the holes and then you can back that nut off. And uh, maybe you can see it on your number dial. You can see that series of holes all the way around. Next is the, uh, this little keeper that um, it's got a stop built into the top uh, uh, that corresponds to uh, this little stop on the inside of the number dial so that the number dial can't go past zero in one direction and can't go past 9.999 in the other direction. This little finger on the top is slightly curved and you want that the point of that little finger to face out towards you when you put it back on. Next is the compression spring. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's just a cone-shaped spring and when it goes on the large end faces the machine and the small end faces out. And this cup is what the spring sets in. You can see the bar in the middle there. And you can see the mark here where the pin has been pressing against it. And again, if your uh, tension isn't releasing all the way, check and see that that bar is not bent out a little bit. Okay, this next assembly is going to come off as four pieces and it's going to include the uh, check spring with it. The check spring is this spring right here that uh, takes up the slack as you press your, your uh, take up levers going up and down uh, and keeps your uh, stitch neat and even. So these four pieces will come off together. And you'll see it's this this plate here, the two tension discs, and the check spring. So we're going to lay the check spring down next. Um, and this plate, uh, you'll see it's got little standoffs on the back of it so that when you're uh, so that your check spring 
has room to move uh, behind this. If the press, if the plate pressed right up against the uh, uh, tension discs or right up against the back of the uh, that little cup, uh, the uh, check spring wouldn't be able to move. So it's got these little standoff bumps on it. Uh, it's also got a pin that corresponds to a small hole in the top, uh, just above the uh, tension assembly. Tension discs are identical convex plates. Um, and these are what you're really getting at. Uh, this is the reason for taking apart the tension assembly. You want to make sure that these plates are clean and smooth. If you run your fingernail across it, if there are any little irregularities or bumps or scores from the thread, I get a little bit of goober right there, <clears throat> your fingernail will feel it. Uh, you can clean them with alcohol or um, usually I just use some fine steel wool and just polish the plates. want any anything that'll catch the thread and keep them from uh, keep it from sliding smoothly between the plates and you don't want any uh, burrs or thread scores in here that are going to uh, cut your thread if you have a problem with thread breakage there are a few places uh, to look for burrs one of course is the needle plate but if you have a little burr in here it can also damage your thread these two plates of the uh, tension assembly, the convex sides face each other so your thread can slide in between the two plates. And then the last plate is this little, um, I really should know the name of these parts after 25 years, but. This plate here, uh, the last one that screws right to the machine, this is the stop for your check spring. Uh, as your take-up lever pulls the thread up, the check spring goes up and then uh, snaps back against that stop there. And this little uh, guide here just helps your thread to move smoothly into the uh, between the two plates. You'll notice that this uh, the hole for the screw is elongated. That's so you can adjust your check spring. And usually uh, <clears throat> you're going to want to put it back on with the check spring uh, with that elongated hole centered over the screw hole. Uh, if you need a little more uh, tension on your check spring, then you uh, back it off a little bit. Uh, in the counterclockwise direction, but uh, generally uh, center it there and you'll probably be in the ballpark. Uh, <clears throat> and that's pretty much it for the disassembly. Um, you, it's a good time to look at all your other parts and make sure there aren't any burrs or uh, rough spots uh, in places that might catch your thread and damage it. This all this this machine is practic practically pristine. Uh, it's beautiful. I'm gonna take it apart anyway, but um, okay this plate goes back on and uh, your thread your uh, check spring stop and this little uh, guide plate here are going to face out towards you. And it it fits over a little uh, a little step here in the metal. A magnetized screwdriver helps a lot. 
takes some getting used to. But once you uh, get the feel of using a magnetized screwdriver, it really helps when you're handling these small screws. Right near the middle of that elongated slot. Okay, next comes that four piece assembly. Your two uh, pressure plates of your tension assembly, uh, the convex sides face each other. And then <coughs> this plate with the standoffs on it goes over the top of that. And then your check spring, uh, your plates are going to fit right between, oops, right into that space there between the check spring and its outer coil. I think the biggest problem with putting a tension assembly back together is the sequence because there are so many possibilities of how these parts could go together. That's why it's a good idea to take pictures and to lay your parts out in sequence as you take them off. Um, <clears throat> also, when I, when I put it in, I usually have the, uh, the check spring facing straight down in the uh, 630 position. Just slide everything onto that split shaft. Make sure that your uh, this outer coil is all the way around the split shaft and not in the center of the split shaft. And then the top pin goes into the hole there and you're assembled. Now you take your check spring and just pull it up past the stop. And that's that's a pretty good check spring tension right there. <clears throat> Next is this little cup that the compression spring sets in. And it's got a plus and a minus on the top for adjusting. So uh, face those up so uh, we can see them, of course. And again, I mentioned those standoffs. See how uh, the check spring can easily move uh, between uh, this cup and the plate behind it. If those standoffs weren't there, that uh, check spring would be, would be smashed in and uh, wouldn't be able to move. So that's what the little standoff bumps do. Next, you have your compression spring, and it's got uh, a horizontal piece that, of course, goes into the center of your split shaft. Then on the end of the compression spring, you're going to put this little stop washer and again uh, the little finger is going to point outwards towards you and your numbered dial uh, I usually put it on with the zero uh, facing up and let's see you want the little stop the little stop inside of your uh, number dial is going to be just to the right of your uh, uh, of the finger on your uh, uh, stop washer so that your uh, dial can turn and uh, stop at zero It'll turn from one to nine and then as you turn back it will stop at zero then of course your last piece is the uh, is your knurled, uh, uh, knurled nut. And uh, that little stop pin is going to go into one of the holes there. Uh, the first thing you want to do is just screw it on lightly <coughs> until you come in contact with the plate there. Uh, you want your, with your dial set at zero, you want no pressure on this um, on the number dial 
uh, so that there's no pressure on your uh, on the plates that actually pinch the thread because when you do machine embroidery where you're darning you're going to want to release all of the pressure on your discs and um, if there's any pressure on that spring at all you can't move your you can't just pull your thread through there'll be a little bit of drag on it so you want no drag on your thread um, and when you turn it up to say three you want to have just a little bit of drag enough that uh, that's just about enough to sew with on regular fabric so uh, we kind of lucked into putting it in just the right spot um, pin let's see where is that pin it's over here um, right now the little pin is somewhere between the one and the two uh, on your machine it might be a little di bit different depending on whether your spring has ever been stretched out a little bit or if it's compressed a little bit from years of use uh, so the pin may go in a different hole on yours but the main thing is uh, you want no pressure on the number dial uh, when you're in the zero position. Now you can turn it from zero up to nine point whatever, and uh, when it stops, you have to stop that way. Turn it all the way back around to zero, and it stops again at zero. And that's because of that little finger on the stop washer behind it. And that's it. You're tension assembly is back together uh, there's a couple things that I neglected to mention take this apart again uh, so I can show you again you press in on the number dial screw your neural knob off number plate your stop washer your compression spring cup the assembly here of four parts uh, when you're um, setting your your uh, tension adjustments make sure that your presser foot is in the down position presser foot of course is right here uh, you want to make sure that your presser foot is in the down position because when you raise your presser foot it pushes a little pin through here, which you don't want to lose when you take your assembly apart. If you tip your machine, <clears throat> if your pin is loose in there, as they usually are, it'll just slide right out onto the floor somewhere. <clears throat> Excuse me. This little pin uh, uh, contacts... Uh, there's a series of parts that when you raise your presser foot, it lifts this, which pushes that, which pushes this little pin. And when, it, when the little pin pushes out, it contacts the back of this um, little cup and presses it forward, which separates the tension discs and uh, lets your thread uh, move freely so you can pull your project out from under the uh, presser foot without bending the needle with the thread. Uh, so before you put this back in, you'll want to clean this with some alcohol or with your uh, fine steel wool. And I usually put a, a tiny drop of oil on there. You don't want it sloppy with oil, but just a little bit uh, so it can move smoothly in there. And when you put your uh, tension assembly back together, Make sure that the pin is in first. And usually <clears throat> there's one end is just a plain, like they cut off the end of the shaft there. The other end oftentimes has a flat spot on it or it's been mashed at the end. And that mashed end faces out towards you. The smooth end goes in the hole in the center of that split shaft. Again, we'll put it back together. We'll put the two tension discs behind 
this plate, put it between the uh, uh, two sides of the uh, check spring. Check spring usually points down in the 630 position. That usually gives me the best uh, tension on the uh, check spring. <coughs> Make sure that the outer loop of the check spring is over the whole shaft and not in the center of it. Pin goes in the hole. Check spring comes up to its stop. Make sure it'll move freely. No cup goes on next with the plus and minus facing up. Compression spring goes in, big end facing the machine. So the stop washer goes on with the finger pointing out towards you. Number dial goes on next with the little stop. <coughs> Excuse me. The little stop stop on the inside of the uh, number dial uh, is going to be just to the right of that little stop washer that fell out. Okay. And then your, then your old knob goes on the outside. You want virtually no pressure on your number plate. Make sure that the uh, <clears throat> pin has gone into one of the holes, otherwise your number dial will be sitting cocked a little bit and it won't be right. Check your tension on your discs at zero. There should be no drag. If you turn it up to about three there should be just a small amount of drag. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Oh, also, I mentioned magnetized screwdriver. You can get a screwdriver magnetizer at your local auto parts store for a few bucks. That's a good thing. It's got a magnetizer on the bottom and a demagnetizer on the top. Every once in a while, your uh, screwdriver magnetism will wane and you just put it in, pull it out, and it's magnetized. <coughs> Keep that on your workbench. It's a handy tool. All right. Thanks. Again, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine. And um, you can find us on the internet. Uh, um, so that's stagecoachroadsewing.com. All one word, stagecoachroadsewing.com. And check us out. Uh, you'll see hundreds and hundreds of um, beautiful machines that we've restored over the last... Well, actually, we've been doing this for 20-some years. Uh, but uh, 10 years ago or so, we lost hundreds and hundreds of photos in a tragic computer crash. Um, but the machines we've done in the last 10 or 15 years are there, and there's hundreds of them that you can see, uh, beautiful examples of restored mid-century mid machines from uh, Europe, uh, America, uh, Japan. Uh, so check us out, and uh, we appreciate you taking the time to watch, and we wish you the Best of luck with your tension assembly. Uh, take it slow, take lots of pictures, and uh, you can uh, email us. You'll find a uh, uh, an email address on the uh, website. Uh, if you run into a problem or need some help, uh, send us an email and we'll see what we can do for you. There's also a phone number there, which uh, your chances of getting help if you call on the phone are not good. I hate the telephone. Uh, I love email. It gives me a, uh, a record of what we talked about. And uh, also, I don't have to think quite as fast. So email me, and uh, we'll help you, out if you, help you out if you need it. And, uh, yeah, keep on sewing. Um, and uh, again, thanks for watching and catch you later.